The Arab Carrier and the Scholar An Arab loaded his camel with two sacks, filling one with width and second with sand, in order to balance the first. As he was proceeding on his way, he met a certain tradition monger, who questioned him about the contents of his sacks. On learning that one contained nothing but sand, he pointed out that the object might be attained much better by putting half the weed in one sack and half in the other. On hearing this, the Arab was so struck by his sagacity that he conceived a great respect for him and mounted him on his camel. Then he said, As you possess such great wisdom, I presume that you are a king or a fasir, or at least a very rich and powerful noble. The theologian replied, Ah, on the contrary, I am a very poor man. All the riches my learning has brought me are weariness and headaches, and I know not where to look for a loaf of bread. The Arab said, In that case, get off my camel and go your way, and suffer me to go mine, for I see your learning brings ill luck. The moral of the story is the worthlessness of mere human knowledge and its inferiority to the divine knowledge proceeding from inspiration. This thesis is further illustrated by an account of the mighty works which were done by the saint Ibrahim bin Adam through the divine knowledge that God had given him. Ibrahim was originally Prince of Bark, but renounced his kingdom and became a saint. One day he was sitting by the shore mending his clock, when one of his former subjects passed by and marveled to see him engaged in such a mean occupation. The saint at once by inspired knowledge with his thoughts and thus corrected his false impressions. He took the needle with which he was mending his clock and cast it into the sea. Then with a loud voice he cried out, O needle! Rise again from the midst of the sea and come back into my hands. Without a moment's delay, thousands of fishes rose to the surface of the sea, each bearing in its mouth a golden needle and cried out, O She, take these needles of God. Ibrahim then turned to the noble, say, Is not the kingdom of the heart better than the contemptible earthly kingdom I formerly possessed? What you have just seen is a very trifling sign of my spiritual power, as it were a mere leaf plucked to show the beauty of a garden. You have now caught the sand of this garden, 
and it out to attract your soul to the garden itself. For you must know that scents have great influence, such as scent of Joseph's court, which restored Jacob's sight, and the scents which were loved by the prophet. Thank you.